Hello, welcome to Revelate Alf live show, video, podcast, radio show, whatever you want to call it. Um, so this is Saturday evening. Uh, I'm going to be talking motorcycles and new bikes, but any discussion you want, anything is on the table for tonight. So I've got a few new bikes I want to show you. Um, but so anything's on the table. It's a Saturday night after all. So I thought, well, you know, whilst I am uh, housebound uh, this evening, let's put it that way. I won't uh, say anything more than that. Uh, I'm housebound tonight. So I thought I'd uh, do a, a nice little radio show, or video show, podcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just to get some ideas out there, get some uh, feedback, but also go through a, a few new bikes on the market so uh, all the information i'm getting is uh, from uh, manufacturer press releases that are being sent direct to me but also uh motorcycle press uh stories as well not only from here in the uk but also i try and see if there's any other stores stories around the world as well so uh so the first section uh tonight is all about this <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the magazine show that brings you all new bikes, or all up-to-date bikes as well. But uh, say, if you want more information on any bike models or anything like that, just go to the website, revelatoralf.com. You can show your support uh, by the super chats and super stickers, super thanks if you're watching afterwards as well. Please leave your comments uh, and uh, anything in the chat as well. Ask any questions as I say. You know, whilst I'm uh, going to be discussing uh, some new bikes on the market, I'm, you know, free for any sort of chat. So I only ask you questions, whether it's about, uh, you know, Japanese bikes, uh, British bikes, uh, Italian bikes, Harley Davidson, whatever it is. I'll be talking about Harley Davidson later on as, as well. You know, where are they? I mean, I keep on saying on these live shows, where are they? And every day I'm searching for news stories searching for rumors substantiated rumors i should say uh, and not just idle rumors about harley davidson and models for next year on what their plans are and so on and so forth so anything i hear i try and bring that uh, on a live show as well and i kind of show you where that information is coming from as well but so this section here right now i'm talking about all new bikes so i'm going to lead off lead off with one of my favorite one of my favorite brands uh of the last few years and it's this mob so fantic uh which uh, i suppose a uh, 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 predominantly an off-road uh, motorcycle brand of the past but they've uh, gotten into the more road sector as well uh, in recent years I've been a huge fan of Fantic uh, for a while. And I wanted to bring uh, across uh, a couple of things for you as well. So I'm just going to show you. Uh, this is Fantic's media site, okay? And this is the motorcycle right here, which is uh, the Caballero 700, which is the brand new motorcycle. And I'm going to give you uh, some of these uh, pictures here for you, uh, just so you get a, a closer look. Now, they do, uh, Fantic do a Caballero 500, a Caballero 125. They used to do a 250. I'm not sure if they're still doing that right now. But this 700, this is a this is a liquid cooled twin cylinder, and this is like scramble style and everything. I'm a huge fan of this Fantic Caballero uh, by either up close or riding or value. I just think it's think it's got the looks. You know, it gives Ducati Scrambler a run for their money, and I just think you know because Fantic have got a lot of off road pedigree. I think it just makes it a really good buy, you know, from all angles like it. I just love it. I just love this kind of buy. If, if I were in the market to buy a new bike, you know, as, as like a run around bike, I would, I would be looking in Fantic's direction. I really would. I, I think that I am that much of a fan. So Fantic, if you're listening, please send me a bike to review and to ride around on. I, you know, I, you know, I don't often say that, but please do, please do, please, please do. Um, but look, they got a couple of other colours as well here. Uh, you know, so it's uh, and they've got lots of photos and and the usual thing with the the media sites, they always come up with the the bulk standard studio sites and then they come out with some, you know. Uh, positional, situational, geographical sites, whatever you want to call them, and basically in the street scene or in a brickyard, you know, Caballero, you know, it looks, I mean, look, for me, it, it just looks nice. I mean, this picture is, is right. It just looks nice. It's a little bit, it's a little bit 
Ducati Scrambler. It's a little bit uh, CCM. Uh, it's 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 a, it's a it's it's got elements of lots of different bikes I and mean, these sort of style are quite popular as well and as i say now that it's a 700 cc um you know so it's uh you know decent stuff decent stuff here from uh fantic uh motorcycle news have actually got a uh, a nice little write-up on it as well and uh, first modern era twin cylinder machine 700 cc uh it's the same engine used in the uh yamaha MT07 Tenere 700R7. It's a Euro 5 compliant, a 689cc liquid cooled. Um, there's been a retuning of the CP2 twin. Either as Fantic claimed, the Caballero will hit showrooms in April next year. And this is Europe, by the way. 75 brake horsepower, 50 pounds, uh, foot pounds of torque, identical to R R7. Considerably more than the 40 brake horsepower, 31 foot pounds of torque of the Caballero Scrambler 500. I think Caballero Scrambler 500 is a really nice bike, but the 700 here now it's just got a little bit more oomph especially if you're taking it on the road as well. Really nice. 19-inch uh, front uh, tyre, 17-inch rear. Yeah, scrambler, you know, street scramblers. Yeah, standard stuff there. Engine sits in a single backbone style frame made from CRMO, uh, um, what's that? Uh, chromium something steel, isn't it? Something like that, whatever that is called. Attach your aluminium swing arm, giving it a wheelbase of 1460 millimeters, 35 mil longer than the 500 uh, version. Yeah, should be better, more stable in a straight line as well. Um, yeah, and it just goes on and on. Brem Brembo brakes, calipers, uh, four piston uh, front caliper. Uh, two piston rear caliper front disc is 330 rear disc is uh, 245 standard stuff abs i've got a story about abs coming uh, later in the show as well that's quite interesting so uh but yeah look i good job uh motorcycle news uh nice little story there and uh good job from fantic i would say so good stuff all around as i say i am a I am a huge fan of, of Fantix. So motorcycle show, motorcycle shows, motorcycle live in a couple of weeks where I'll be going. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be hanging around Fantix, that's for sure. So if you see me hovering about, come and say hello and come and offer me uh, your, one of your bikes to ride, please, or try out. I would really, really enjoy it. Honestly, I'm going to keep on saying it. I mean, I love that Fantix so much. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the 700. It could be the 500. You know, I'm equally enamored. For me, it's the red, the red, the red, the black, the yellow accents. Just love it. I just love it. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, the next story, as it were, uh, is uh, from this mob. Here we go. Benelli, Benelli, oh, oh, Benelli. Uh, let me just show you what uh, come up here. A little story here from uh, Drive uh, Express Drives. Uh, basically, Benelli, they've kind of reworked all their range here. But this uh, this uh, kind of adventure bike style that they've done, um, the, you know, it's it's an older bike, of course, but they've revamped it. Uh, for the 2023, so the Benelli 2023, Benelli TRK 502, and the 502 X get cosmetic updates, including new color screams. However, mechanically they remain unchanged. However, if we look at Benelli as a as a uh, manufacturer, obviously and originally, um, of course, Italian manufacturer, but now Chinese owned. Uh, but if I just go to their media site here, I'll just quickly show you here. Uh, you know they've got lots of lots of bikes again another brand that i've always really liked uh benelli and i can't really put my finger on it i can't really say to you uh with any sort of degree of certainty uh or absolute uh positivity positivity as it were why i like them so much i don't know but i just do so if that makes any sense i think i just like the styling i think i like the name the sound of it i like that green color that quintessential Benelli green color. So there's lots of elements that it don't really make a lot of sense, if you know what I mean, but I do. Anyway, so uh, they've got uh, these uh, these models here, the TRKA uh, 800 for 2023, Leoncino 800 Trail, nice looking bike, that one as well. Uh, the Leoncino 800, they also do a 500 Leoncino, yes. And I think they do a one, two, uh, sorry, a 250 Leoncino as well. So they go they go down in the, um, in the, uh, 
the rank of the um the sizes as well uh lee and chino's uh, do something but this uh trk 500 502x uh this is the my my 2023 bike coming in uh, different colors as well this is another one this is their kind of naked sports bike as it were well, not sports, but just a naked bike. 752S. Uh, you've got a TRK a 702, sort of adventure, sort of style bike as well. Look, look the thing is about Benelli, and, and I'll, I'll tell you about this about Benelli. They they are of these Japanese, they are European design house, which I call right now, but a Chinese owned, but they come in on price. They just come in on price. And that's the thing. So you're getting good value for money there, um, you know, with them. So, you know, look at, I mean, look, they look nice. I've got. So, I mean, is it just me, or that they've got some decent lines here, Benelli? I've I've got to say, I'm I'm quite impressed with Benelli. I'm, I must admit. Okay, so that's Benelli. Uh, good stuff from them. So all good stuff. Right. I'm. Just, I say I'm quickly running through here of all the press releases that I've uh, received uh, today and the last couple of days, and uh, some of the uh, information as well. So bear with me. I'm just trying to knock these out as quickly as I can for you. I encourage you, of course, to go and read the magazines, go and do your research. I'm just trying to give you a snapshot of what's out there, what's coming out right now. Uh, And vid alarming efficiency bmw have also uh released uh updates i should say updates uh of of their bikes as well if i take you to uh the press sites and the media sites here um cycle world from the us aren't they uh they're, they're uh, writing up on the the 2023 bmw r1250 rs receives a number of upgrades uh for the model year but remains the same well fifteen thousand uh, dollars in the us of course i think it's it's a little bit more expensive expensive in, in pounds and in euros over here but look that's a nice looking bike so that 1200 1250rs really nice sports tourer i suppose uh style sport light uh light white racing blue red yeah nice uh several updates to the boxer powered I and mean, it's a boxer engine nice i mean i like that boxer engine many people don't uh but i like it um the changes are focused on refinement over a revolution primarily focusing on the motorcycles electronic rider aid equipment while leaving the core elements the same dynamic her traction control is now fitted to the uh, r1250rs standard equipment um yeah, it just goes on and on. Uh, same pair of Brembo four piston brakes. So it's mostly electronic upgrades on here uh, for BMW. I mean, on their press site as well. Uh, let me just get, get rid of that. Uh, they're making uh, so big waves on this as well. Obviously, being, being, if you watch my live shows, uh, apologies for the, the stutter there. If you watch my live shows the last few weeks, obviously BMW are drip feeding out new models and new updates to models, existing models as well. So this is the latest uh, from BMW Motorrad as well. Look, it looks nice. Let me give you a couple of uh, close-up photos here, if I can find them, that is. Um, here we go. Have a look at this. I mean, it, they, they do look nice. Let me just get rid of that banner at the bottom. There we go. I mean, they do look nice. I got to say. I mean, I say this kind of bike. I think BMW do really well, really well. I think. Uh, not that one. There we go. Tail section here, handlebars. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sort of straight motocross uh, sort of styles, aren't they? You know, adventure. You know, a, a, a really comfortable riding position. I would say uh, all this. And here we are. We've got more in different colours, of course. I think they go for a black as well. I'm just skipping through uh, these for you. Oop, wrong one. Uh, there we go. So that's uh, look. That's uh, BMW with their with their new bike as well. Again, uh, you know, I I would say. I would say, uh, yeah, a decent effort from BMW as well. Uh, I will get to the comments uh, later on. So let me just quickly uh, get those. Yeah, thanks very much. So I'll definitely will come back to your comments later. So leave any questions or anything like that. And we'll have a general chit chat afterwards as well. Okay. Uh, I hope you I hope you digging into these uh, new models as well. As I say, snapshot here of the new models uh, of what press releases that I'm receiving myself. Okay. Uh, so this is, and also a bit of internet trawling uh, or, or, or motorcycle press trawling, I should say as well. Okay. Uh, right. What's, uh, what's in the news?
Okay, what's in the news? There's there's this company here, um, and maybe you associate them with cars. And I suppose this is all about electric bikes, but it's, it, this is something different here. I went into a dealership uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a multi-brand dealership. You might have seen one of my videos as well. What I didn't mention on that, that they had a couple of bikes from Seat, who make mo uh, motor cars, of course, Spanish brand as well. But they also make electric bikes as well. And uh, here we go, Seat. And now Seat have unveiled, let me just bring up the press uh, here, as well they've got this uh mo mo125 performance electric scooter as well and they look quite funky i've got to say let me just uh, bring up some of the um uh, the the graphics for you because they <laughs> well what can i say they, they, they look all right i mean you know for scooters as well it's almost got that angular look to them and yeah look they're scooters they're electric scooters i think this is where electric bikes electric scooters of the of the like are this is where the, the real strength is in, in this kind of brand, in this kind of uh, in this kind of area. Electric scooters, urban scooters, urban small bikes as well. Visor down, do a nice little story here as well. The Seat Mo One Two Five has already been established by the Spanish brand, more normally associated with hatchback cars um, uh, than uh, motorcycles or other power two uh, wheelers. But the performance Seat says. Uh, new elements to increase its desirability. For those unfamiliar, the MO125 is probably worth pointing out that it's an electric scooter, even though the name might suggest it's a 125. Okay, the electric motor, 7.5 uh, kilowatts, 10 horsepower. Um, yeah, it's, it's a scooter. What, what do you expect? But I just think it looks cool. I think it's cool. And, I, you know, I was completely oblivious to the fact that Seat were making electric scooters. So, so there we go. I just thought I'd bring you that story there because I thought, well, interesting, interesting. Okay. In the news as well is uh, this here. And this is from, uh, which is the Automotive World, the yeah, Automotive World publication. And it said, Continental uh, presents a two-channel motorcycle ABS with integrated sensor technology. I would normally associate uh, ABS technology with Bosch, uh, but Continental here have uh, basically developed a brand new one, and it just goes on and on in you know all technical stuff a lot of stuff that i don't know but it's basically just improving abs improving the sensors improving um what uh, the the capability of it is and everything else from pressure your acceleration uh, the sensor technology measures all three rotation rates and all three accelerations in space so like um an electronic gyroscope big sensory array or something i don't know uh but look the interest in our new two channel abs is enormous um uh, and this by no means is only true for the european market but on the contrary also for the large asian uh, volume mar uh, manufacturers as well so look the, you know go, go read the story but look I, th I think you know there's the serious challenge here to uh the mainstay uh abs providers and then all of a sudden now you've got continental here saying look we've got a much superior product in, in their words i suppose so i suppose they're saying you know i'm reading between the lines we've got a much superior product and you know, we've got a lot of interest in motorcycle manufacturers around the world so look you know th this could develop further and further especially as abs becomes more and more of a of a standard uh feature of motorcycles around the world in, in all markets as opposed to like in european markets it is uh, mandated that uh, motorcycles must have abs right so that's uh one thing here this is uh the next story here is from uh this company here called uh lightning uh lightning make um electric motorcycles as well very nice if you like elect you know your lightnings and everything like that sports bikes they, they make decent bikes i mean if you're into this whole electric thing that's not the story, though, okay? That's not the story. It's not about lightning motorcycles. It's actually about lightning motorcycles and this other company called Innovate. Innovate here. And they've developed a battery, a new electric battery, that they say can recharge in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I mean, would you believe that? Um, 
so here we go the high performance motorcycle charge in less than 10 minutes for an additional 135 miles the motorcycle battery charged at 400 amps charge rate nearing 5c uh, which is almost five times conventional ev batteries um so targ targeting motorcycle production for early 2023 and that's from Irvine, california and f8 corp you know I, I, you know bless the americans they do quite well in the in the ev market they are kind of you know obviously holly davidson notably but you know other electric motorcycle manufacturers uh you know they've kind of ahead of the curve really and it turns into you know if you consider like the japanese uh, motorcycle manufacturers and many other motorcycle manufacturers have joined this big consortium to produce standardized electric motorcycle batteries so the next thing is, is about range but also how long does it take to charge these things right and to get a full charge well if you've got where it's at where it's at the technology is not really going to be in the motors and a bike is a bike you know in terms of structure and in terms of braking and handling and all that sort of stuff yeah there's going to be tweaks but the, the massive the massive um uh, improvement here is going to be in obviously motors but it's also going to be the electronics but it's going to be the the batteries and the charging time and the charge cycles and how long these batteries last and you know the durability of them and all that that's the massive main um, movement here so lightning here from the united states they're saying they've got a battery there they can give it a lot of range a lot of range and charge in 10 minutes now that makes electric bikes a lot more user friendly as it were a lot more usable for me and let us know let us know your thoughts there as well but you know if there are companies out there that are doing that you know fa fair play to them fair play to them that's all, that's all i can say okay uh let's uh, get on to i suppose the next section is all about this <laughs> Okay, I've talked about um, I've I've talked about uh, you know uh, lightning. I've talked about uh, you know Seat with their their kind of quirky uh, scooter bikes and everything. I want to talk about this uh, this company here. Okay, so Energica or Energica, uh, which is basically energy in Italian, right? Uh, or energetic. In Italian, uh, they've you know, with their press releases here, let me just show you uh, some press here, some press for them from inside EVs. I say again, go read, go have a look at these, uh, these publications yourself, have a read through of it as well. Um, but they're talking about their new bikes here as well. So, all of the energetic energetic new models have up to five percent improvement in range and a, and a seven newton meter boost in torque around 4.5 foot pounds. All three models now have a range of 420 kilometers that's 261 miles for city ridings and 155 miles 250 kilometers for combined city and highway riding, or 200 kilometers of 100 or 124 of highway riding. Okay. According to any Energica, and this is uh, uh, increased. These changes also increase the rear wheel torque by 35 newton meters. Uh, a DC fast charger can charge the battery from empty to 80 percent in under 40 minutes. Okay, again, so we're talking about uh, charge time and everything like that. Okay, let me go to their site and I'll, and I'll show you exactly what they've got. Okay, the, this is the, this is the bike here, the uh, Xperia, the Energica Xperia, the Italian brand of, of course, electric bikes here. This is the one you know when we talk about zero motorcycles a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of commentators, a lot of YouTubers actually who, who specialize in EV bikes. Uh, or EV vehicles, as they were saying, well, look, everybody's talking about Zero. What about Energica? They've produced this bike ahead of Zero, and it's you know it's actually a better bike. It's a better better way. Uh, they've got this uh, Energica Eva Ribelle, this kind of naked bike. A couple of sports bike, well, one sports bike's the Ego, and this kind of other naked, the SS9. Uh, let me just give you some uh, some here we go, some close ups here. There we go. This is uh, Energica with uh, with uh, uh, Xperia. I mean, it looks nice, doesn't it? I mean, it's got nice nice lines to it. It's good. Uh, this is their naked bike, which is the Eva Ribelle. I mean, that looks nice. 
And that's back to the... And this is their engine as well. I do like it that they put this high voltage on the side of their engine. I mean, it just kind of makes makes me laugh. Uh, and then a couple of their models here. This is that naked there again as well, that River Bella. Uh, this is the... Uh, uh, this is the uh, Ego uh, here. More photos on the Ego. They've got different models as well, different in, in the range as well. Uh, and this is the SS. Nice. I mean, they look nice. Like I guess I say, you know, they're they're usually at the trade shows as well. They're at the European show uh, this week as well. So, Energica, you know, they've got new bikes, new models that they're all expanding the brand, as it were. They're um, they're expanding the brand. They're expanding the models. They're expanding the capability. They're doing a lot of work right now. So they're you know they're pumping out news information for next year for 2023 and the bikes that they're going to be bringing out, all the improvements to those bikes and the new models they're going to be bringing. The latest one really is that that uh, that uh, adventure style bike, the the uh, Xperia. That's the one. That's the one. But they're saying all their bikes really have this capability now. And, you know, the charging times have come down. The range is going up. Yes, you got to imagine that the price tag on these is still in the in the high thousands. Of course, you know it's is not that you're not going to get anything sub twenty thousand really. But you know, in a few years' time, obviously prices are going to come down but range and charging times that's what's going to make it a lot more uh, affordable for people and then it's going to come uh, there's going to be a point where we're talking about value and i always say this i always say this about motorcycle brands and motorcycle buying a motorcycle right it's all about value okay what you perceive as value and everybody has a different benchmark for what a value is but if you're comparing like for like this is for me, this is where this is the biggest comparison. You have a value grade and what you're willing to pay and what what you get out of that bike and what you want out of it and what you can compare that with the equivalent petrol bike. And when those match, when you get equal value, that's where you're going to see the sudden transition. Well, not sudden transition, but you're going to see the transition from petrol bikes to EV bikes as well. Uh, and this is the same for cars as well. When you get that point, and if there's like a incentives out there by governments or whatever, you know, to you know to give you tax relief for you know on buying these bikes or all that kind of stuff, you know, or they make it cheaper if they're just generally cheaper to buy. You know, that's when they'll they'll uh, definitely you know be in the market as well as it were okay uh so you know we've talked about a few bikes here there so you know quite in quite interesting okay so the last thing uh, i wanted to talk about uh is well do, do you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna flash up a few pictures for you and see what you think i did have a graphic for them but you know like a like a complete donut i've wiped it off but here we go have a look at these i mean just look at these i mean they look like something is just landed from Mars. I mean, you know, they might not be to everybody's taste, but if you're talking about futuristic bikes, my crikey, the, these look, especially this one, especially this here, this looks futuristic to me, right? Now, many of you are thinking, oh, well, what's this got to do with us? What's this got to do with, you know, uh, bikes or, you know, well, not bikes, but uh, us right now, whatever. Well, what's this got to do with, hey, I've come here for Harley Davidson talk. I've come here, come here for whatever talk, petrol talk. Okay, let me sh just show you the magazine here, Motorcycle News. And this has also been um, at in lots of motorcycle press around the world because uh, Kimco, Kimco, hey, Taiwanese, Taiwanese brand, Kimco. Uh, they've launched these uh, this Revo Next and the Super Next electric concepts uh, of the European uh, motorcycle show uh, well, to Milan. Uh, the Super Next ele uh, electric superbike um, was first unveiled back in 2018. Was followed a year later by the Revo Next. Uh, but basically, they're they're um, they're saying they've presented heavily updated versions of it now. Uh, really nice, and the story goes on and on and on. And please, by all means, go and read it, okay? But this for me is not the story, all right? This is not the story. The story is right that Kimco were actually in, in the shadows a little bit, uh, uh, until last year. They were producing bikes and they were, you know, or small vehicles and everything like that, but they were in the shadows. 
well, not in the shadow because they're a huge company, but in terms of motorcycles, I'm talking about in terms of large scale motorcycles. But obviously, they've taken this 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 movement into electric bikes. The interesting thing is here, for those of you who don't know, and how this relates to Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, as we know, they subdivided their electric department, as it were, electric vehicle department, the Live Wire and uh, division, as it were, and they formed their own company, Live Wire, right? As we know that. So the Live Wire One, as it's now called, and the uh, Dalmar are electric bikes and electric technology is coming from Live Wire, the company. And some of that is obviously filtering into Harley Davidson itself in terms of motorcycle. And this is where we're talking about 2023 bikes. Some of that technology is already going over. This is what I've heard certainly in the last week confirmed whereas before it was just rumor confirmed that technology from livewire is already going into the bikes and new bikes and new models uh projected for 2023 so that that pathway already exists right however when harley davidson wanted to uh set up livewire as a separate company and they also wanted to float it on the uh, new york stock market which they've done now and it's all floated and there's been mixed reviews and mixed uh, uh performance and there's been talks of it being overinflated and people taking their money out and it's losing money and harley davis and have to you know back it up and bankroll it all this sort of stuff right one of the major investors with Harley Davidson into Livewire were Kimco. Kimco, because there is a deal there between Harley Davidson, well, Kimco, but actually with Livewire under the, the, the umbrella of Harley Davidson to provide Kimco with uh, electronic components, electrical components, motors. I think it even goes to motors. And I think there's even talk of batteries, but I'm not 100% sure on the batteries. I can't remember. I, I seem to recall they said batteries, but it, I think it was definitely motors. There's definitely a connection there. So when you're talking about a Taiwanese brand here, right? And, you know, we're talking about, you know, futuristic looking bikes. I mean, I mean, you know, let me just flash this up again. Let me look at that, right? Just, just have this in mind that in the innards, inside there is... American made or it's Harley Davidson live wire components. You know, that's what they're planning to use. They're planning to use Harley Davidson uh pilots. So when you when we talk about American motorcycle manufacturers or German or British or Japanese or Taiwanese or Korean, the reality is these days, and I hate to burst the bubble for people, but the reality is that companies have been working on a global scale for a long long time and there have been deals and manufacturing deals and component deals with different manufacturers all around the world so when you say oh mine is a british brand let's say it's triumph or mine is an italian brand or mine is an american brand it might be american in terms of ownership but the international deals or the international influence is huge. And this here is a case where an American brand, Harley Davidson and Livewire, have actually joined up with Taiwanese brand Kimco to produce electronic components for them as well. So look, I mean that's you know, that's something to certainly keep an eye out for for the future electric bikes from kinko as well and uh, you know they they make lots of uh, electric components of course electric scooters that kind of stuff as well already uh, it's not as if they're brand new to the bike but they've got these two concepts they look nice i'm not I'm not so sure about this one yeah and again the more i look at it with this color scheme okay these are concept bikes as well okay so just bear that in mind Okay, but you know this sort of sportier bike-looking one. I mean, it looks. You know, I gotta say, it does. Let me give you this picture here. It looks pretty snazzy as well. Again, nice bike, futuristic. Looks looks the business. So, you know, good job here to. Uh, again, you know, I'm. I'm you know, I encourage you to go and look at these uh, websites and, and these news stories as well, wherever you are in the world. But uh, there we go. That's uh, motorcycle news. Um, Visor down, yeah, d decent set of stories this week. Uh, inside EVs, yeah, decent there. Uh, this is who is this? Oh, Automotive World as well. They did as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the lightning story that came from Road Racing World and Motorcycle Technology. 
Uh, so that was a good. Fantic, always a, a winner for me. BMW, always deliver, I think, deliver on, on stuff. And then Benelli, I think, it's just one of those brands that I think, uh, you know, have done, done, you know, really good stuff over the last uh, few years. Yeah. Okay, right. So let me just get rid of uh, all of that. If I can just, there we go. Uh, all of that. There we go. Fine. Stop sharing there. So there we go. Those are all the brand new motorcycles that have been sent to me. Uh, well, I wish they'd been sent to me. Uh, but the the press release has all been sent to me as well this week. Uh, well, actually, in the last couple of days. And there's more information is coming through as well. And uh, this is kind of when I talk about uh the the information that i get and uh the stories that i get and sometimes in the past i, I say i put that in videos as well a lot of this would come from motorcycle press industry press uh financial press from all around the world they give stories as well but there's also uh press releases of motorcycles but as i say there's other stuff where people are sending me information via email which i can't i can't show as you know as evidence because it's just somebody saying s something to me and obviously i'm not gonna you know sh give out their name for example of what somebody sent to me but i might talk about it in terms of oh this is just a rumor as opposed to this is actual fact so what i've just shown you there this is factual in terms of it comes from the manufacturer, it comes from it's being reported widely uh, by Motorcycle Press. Uh, anyway, uh, here we go. Let's get into a couple of uh, messages. Here we go. I love it. Uh, owner of Super Glide. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. How are you? Uh, thank you. Uh, 70s classic uh, look very nice. Yes, some of those bikes look very nice. Uh, my first uh, motorized two wheels was a Benelli. I, I do love a Benelli, I've got to say. I was in Italy uh, last year. No, yes, a year and a half ago. Uh, was it? No, sorry, not less than that, a year ago. And um, yeah, I just saw a Benelli on the side of the street. Uh, one, uh, an older one, a retro one that's uh, not a retro one, an older one that somebody had bought and done up. And it just looks so nice. You know, very small, very diminutive. But, I, you know, hey, definitely had me stopping and looking as well. But again, I'm not sure why I like Benelli. So I just do. Uh, uh, I remember the Benelli 750, say, six spot from the 70s. Yeah, nice. But I say, I, I've known a couple of friends who have owned Benelli's. And, and, you know, whilst they like a lot of motorcycles, like a lot of bikes, like a lot of manufacturers, they have their problems. They had their problems. And this was prior to their japanese uh, sorry prior to their chinese takeover as well yeah italian manufacturing and all the problems but they said they were absolutely lovely bikes lovely bikes when they worked and the the uh now what was the sport bike that they had the benelli it was a green and silver i forgot what it was but it was it looked just absolutely lovely and a couple of people i knew had that they had the um the sit up uh bike uh now what was it called not it began with a t Benelli something T, name escapes me. They said how great that was as well. And I was actually very close to going to test ride one of those a few years ago, actually, the Benelli. So as I say, you know, I, but I think it's that color. The color that I just, I just think is fantastic. That's why I like Kawasaki's with that similar kind of green color, that Kawasaki green. Love that Kawasaki green. Love that Benelli green as well. Green is not my color, funny enough. Interesting. I don't know. Strangely, it's not my, you know, my kind of thing. But there we go. Anyway, so this is an open chat now. Uh, we have the motorcycles. I had a bit of industry press for you. Uh, this is a motorcycle magazine live show video uh, podcast as well. So if you want to, you know, show your support, please uh, do that. Join in the chat. Uh, you know, subscribe to the channel, all that kind of stuff. Leave your comments if you're watching this before and uh, after and ask your questions as well. I always say ask you questions because if you want to ask questions here uh, in the comments or in the chat, or if you want to uh, send a question in uh, via the website or email me, uh, then I, you know, I can talk about that in future videos as well or in future uh, live streams as well. If there's a topic you want me to discuss, please, uh, please feel free uh, to, uh, you know, discuss and, uh, you know, or feel free to, feel free to share and ask and uh, we'll discuss it in a, in a live show. If you want to come on one of these shows and have your say, please do, you know, uh, again, get in touch with us. Let us know. 
but say this this next topic well let's let's just talk about this shall we about this lot and i suppose i got to ask this <laughs> Where did it all go wrong? Well, it hasn't really gone wrong. But where are they now? Where are Harley Davidson now? And I say this on every live stream as well, because as you saw, I've just spent 35 odd minutes plus talking about other motorcycle brands that are bringing all their bikes. And where are Harley Davidson? We've got motorcycle shows right now that Harley Davidson, I'm sure, are a presence and will be a presence, but they're not bringing anything new to the party. You know, uh, they've had their problems this year. Their problems with recalls. They've had problems with, you know, multiple thousand motorcycle recalls for taillights. You know, I've reported this on previous live shows as well and in videos. Uh, the uh, the Nightster with the, with the handlebars, you know, all this sort of stuff. So they've had recalls. They've had their FTC ruling about warranties. Where is it? Is it going wrong, or is it just a blip and you know a blip on the horizon, as it were, or a blip in the, uh, in the um, in an otherwise seamless uh, uh, operation. I, well, I don't think any manufacturing can say they've had a seamless operation right now because of the problems that are over the globe. But Harley-Davidson have had a few issues this year, no doubt. They've had a lot of triumphs, don't get me wrong, but they've had a few issues. And the biggest one has been this FTC ruling from the United States. The government have gone against Harley-Davidson. And, you know, as we know, this is old story now, uh, old story that over the warranties about you know people uh, having their warranties um, voided because of what Holly Davidson claimed were you know uh, bad practices let's say that you shouldn't be working on your bike you shouldn't repair it with so and so parts you can only go through them and all that sort of stuff and they created their own monopoly their own first monopoly but they also created and I suppose this is the worst thing about it they created the a fear, a sense of fear or a sense of trepidation, a sense of hesitation amongst Harley-Davidson riders, especially new Harley-Davidson riders or new riders to the brand. And everybody's kind of got brainwashed into thinking, you can't do this to your bike, you can't do that to your bike. Yeah, the likes of me saying, you're not allowed to do that. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. Think very carefully about doing that. And as is always the case, it's always, a, you know, it depended on the relationship that you have with your dealership and you know, what kind of open and frank discussions you can have with them, but also, you know, what the dealerships are allowed to do with the manufacturer as well. So there's, you know, there's lots of variables here and some are positive, some are negative. But I suppose one of the questions I was thinking today about Harley Davidson in particular, because they've had such a rough ride. And I wanted to try and think about it from the other side of, of the fence, as it were. And so, so, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on the net, I'm sitting on the fence and I'm watching the, the play going backwards and forwards from consumer rights to manufacturing and, you know, dealerships and, you know, um, new direction of the company and all this sort of stuff. So you kind of go like this and, you know, you're wondering, this is a game of tennis here. It's a nice little rally. Everything's going. Yeah, that, that, somebody's going to win a point in a minute. Somebody's going to come on top in a minute. And for now, you think that the consumer has come on top. But, you know, Harley Davidson, just like any other manufacturer, still have the upper hand in many other respects. But it's the warranty issue, right? Okay. But I, I started questioning this. I said, are Harley Davidson right? Are they right to be very cautious or to put in these, these unfair practices, these illegal practices? You know, whether it's illegally, whether it's illegal, whether it's not right in terms of, industry standards let's say but is it right you know is it is it justifiable is it right because let's let's put it this way you're a motorcycle manufacturer let's say or a car manufacturer and you you're saying to say right okay somebody can buy your vehicle and they can put virtually anything on your bike they can change your vehicle right uh within this warranty period and if something goes wrong uh then it's down to you right uh and so Harley Davidson's uh, reaction was, well, no, if you're changing something and it breaks, whatever, that's not our problem. And do you know what? Don't be fooled by all this FTC thing right now, because that is still the case. That is still the case. If you have something on your bike within the warranty period 
and it's substanti it's substantially altered and the part itself fails that is not harley davidson that's not harley davidson's problem that's your problem if that part has caused an issue on the bike then yeah you you know you have to prove there's an onus of of proving that it didn't do it now they could say well it has it has definitely caused this issue right so if you let's say if you put a new um instead of uh, you change your bike belt to a chain drive let's say and the chain breaks for whatever reason okay i don't know and it just you know i don't know cause you to crash it rips your leg off and all, all that kind of stuff and you know it completely damages the bike whatever you you can't go back to harley davidson and say oh well look warranty warranty and they say no you've changed the bike you've changed what it is you know so when we're talking about you know, they've got to be like for like, and they've got to be, you've got to make sure that the work has done, been done properly. But there's always going to be some kind of burden of proof on your part, regardless of what everybody's saying. It's got to be a burden of proof on your part and the consumer's part to say this part is, is was fitted correctly and everything like that. So it's about home mechanics which i'm really thinking about now home mechanics if you're going to do substantial work on your bike within the first two years and when i say substantial work okay if you're ch taking the heads off if you're taking the you know the, the jugs off if you're doing massive performance upgrades you know stage four that kind of thing at home right then hey listen guess what you know if something goes wrong that's down to you that's not harley davidson and do you know what for me that's right that is right. It's it's not their problem if you substantially change that bike. However, what they were doing was pretty much giving this fear, this um, this uh, this atmosphere of fear of uh, hesitation to say anything that you do on your bike is going to void the warranty. So much so, actually, it brought into question that anything that was done, even with Harley Davidson parts and Screaming Eagle parts, even by a dealership would void your warranty well that's just ridiculous isn't it so this is where the ruling really comes into place you say well actually you know if everything is substantial if it's done but with harley davidson parts or not if it's been done right if it's done properly you know all this sort of stuff if um you know if you can prove that it's been done properly you've used these tools you've used this process so and so forth then you know you've got nothing to worry about all you know but you've still got a real headache to try and get all this stuff this stuff you know approved let's say warranty work but don't be so don't be don't be so fooled to say well just because there's a newspaper clipping or there's a there's a, a youtube channel like me saying hey look the ftc have ruled you know whatever harley davidson a big company right and they're still going to try and get out of it if they can they're still going to try and get out of it now for some people as I say, I sit on the fence sometimes with it. And I and I always kind of try and have a balanced view of what is fair, what is fair. And I always have a try and have a balanced view in terms of the consumer, motorcycle rider, buyer. But also I try and see it from a dealership point of view because they're there to make money, you know, and they're there to put on a show, let's say. But also from the manufacturer, we all kind of need each other. We all kind of need each other. You know, dealerships need customers to walk through the door. We need to be treated right. We need to be treated fairly. Manufacturers need customers, but they also need some kind of network to sell the bikes as well. There needs to be better communication. There needs to be some kind of better relationship all around. Prices need to come down. Supply needs to increase. You know, all the things. Quality needs to be improved in some cases. But it's 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 not when things are going right. And it's just like anything in, in this life. It's not when things are going right. It's when things are going wrong. And when I when I talked about Harley Davidson for, for you know, in many, many videos, uh, uh, either discussing some of the stories I'd heard or or actually it was a lot of experiences that people had emailed me about. Say, look, this is a problem I'm having with my bike. This is a problem. Da, 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 and, uh, and Harley Davidson uh, saying, I can't have this warranty or whatever. And now I was oh, in many ways, as I say, I've, I've said this before. I was kind of criticized for bringing these stories out, right? And I'd say, well, actually, hold on a minute. Um, guess what? 
I was right and they were right to be concerned. They were right to be hacked off because Carly Davidson were doing something illegal and that they should not have been doing it. And people have lost money, they lost time, they lost patience, they've lost faith in the brand, but they've also been frustrated and stressed out over this whole period. You're supposed to buy a brand new vehicle, whatever it's a car, whatever, and within that warranty period, touch wood, touch wood, uh, nothing should happen, right? But if it does, that's why you got a warranty there, so it should everything be fixed. And then all of a sudden, Harley Davidson in particular had this weird notion that they could encourage you to modify your bike change your bike but they wouldn't cover it under warranty and that's the crux of it for harley davidson unlike any other motorcycle brand they were always built their model their marketing model was always about making it your own you know buy a motorcycle make it your own and you know you know live the lifestyle live the freedom you know be an individual be you know don't follow the crowd you know don't be the duck in a row you know just do your own thing be be the ugly ugly duckling be the goose the galloping goose what i don't know i just made that up but you know what i mean <laughs> it, you know so they've built their reputation on it so all of a sudden, then people were getting increasingly, increasingly worried about this. And it's drawn the attention of the American uh, authorities, of course. And guess what? Now they're facing lawsuits, Harley Davidson, civil suits from different parts of the United States. And this has been going on for a, two or three months now. Again, this is not new news. I'm not bringing you new news here. But I'm just trying to say, OK, I sit in the middle now. Well, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. I'm sitting in the middle. There is always... There's always two sides to the story or two perspectives or two ways of looking at things. And you've got to look at it from you as a consumer, but you've got to look at it from a business point of view, from a dealership and a business point of view from a manufacturer as well. They want to sell, 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 sell. They want to keep on, but they don't want to spend. They don't want to rectify anything in their problems. However, in the middle, as a consumer, you're going to say, right, I'm going to, oh, I've, got to, I've got to pay, pay, pay. You know, if something goes wrong, oh, I don't want to keep on paying. And do you know what? It's it's nothing to do with me. It's always somebody else's. So within that, within that construct, that you know, the way we operate as human beings, as them as a business, you as the buyer, you as the the consumer, you as the customer, right? There's always going to be people who are going to try it on. There are always going to be people who are they know they've done something wrong but they're going to try and blame them or that they they don't acknowledge that actually what they've done to their own machine has you know has caused problems you know and you know they're going to try and blame it on the manufacturer or blame it you know so with all the emails that i got from people and i still get them occasionally because i've stopped making that kind of content it doesn't attract that kind of content uh, those kind of questions of course okay so there's you know there's that to factor in as well uh the more you talk about this sort of stuff the more you make videos the more you sort of complain and rant and all that sort of stuff the more people want to share their stories with you but no doubt a big i wouldn't say majority but i suppose let's say let's be fair let's be fair here a good 50 50 i would say 50 were really 50 percent of of absolutely bona fide concerns bona fide complaints but I don't know, 40, 50 percent, you, you kind of start saying, OK, you've told me this about your bike or whatever. You had this problem. But then you, in my mind, I start saying that I start tapping away, uh, asking a question. Well, what did you do? You know, what have you done? You know, whatever. You know, have you done this? And sometimes people don't respond. So it's almost like, aha, I've caught you out. I've caught you out. You know, I've. Uh, you know, I've I've asked the question that maybe dealerships are asking you the question, and you're probably wanting somebody to just say to you, "Yeah, you're right, and they're wrong." Well, actually, sometimes I'm trying to be fair here and trying to say, "Well, actually, if you've done that to your own bike, guess what? That's your own damn fault." Do you know what I mean? And so maybe this is where Harley Davidson were justified, and maybe all manufacturers are justified. In fact, they are justified. In fact, this is standard practice, isn't it? But when they start, as, as we would say in the UK, when they start taking the piss, when they start taking the piss and, uh, you know, making a mockery of what is right, what they should protect you on your bikes or your motor cars or motor vehicles or whatever it is, then it is. Now, you know, again, it, it depends where you are in the world. Different, You have different consumer laws, different consumer rights. And I always say this about that. 
But, you know, but Harley Davidson, they've been in the news all year for the wrong reasons, I would say. For a lot of it, not not all of it, because they've had some good, really good elements. But I think, you know, if you talk about the bikes that they've um, released this year, there hasn't really been a lot. And I think now, now, right now, with all these live shows that I'm doing, I'm ch- showcasing all the motorcycle manufacturers, they are starting to ramp it up. And the electric bikes, uh, which I'm featuring now, now with the, the brands, they are starting to ramp it up for 2023 and obviously going into 2024. So I asked this question, and it, you know, it's the title of the, the live stream. Where are Harley Davidson now? Yeah, we know. We know Harley Davidson are in January. That's when this big. When, when we stop talking about all the other motorcycle brands, well, we're not going to start talking about them because this is when their, their motorcycles will be coming to market. Their motorcycles will be arriving January, February, March in Europe, let's say, April. This is when we'll receive this, where you can see them go test ride them and all that. So order them and they'll be there, you know, within reason, supply chains willing, as it were. But Harley Davidson only only talking about it, launching this stuff in January. So it depends where you are in the United States. You might get them pretty quickly at the end of January, February, March, whatever. I'm talking brand new models here, brand new, if, if they release brand new models. But the rest of the world, it might be another six months, eight months, 10 months, whatever. You know, so it, 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 for me, Harley Davidson are behind the curve. They're behind the curve here in terms of what is hot now, what is happening now, what people are talking about, what people are searching for. And people are searching for, let's say, if, if you're a Harley Davidson fan, let's say, you probably think about, you might search for cruisers, tourers, um, you know, retro bikes, that kind of thing. You know, if you're into Harley Davidson, you're going to, you kind of might like other bikes as well. You won't like sports bikes, let's say. You won't like this, you won't like that. But, you you know, you'll like similar kind of bikes or similar kind of era bikes as well. So, you know, Indian, I said the other day in a live show, they come out with an updated FTR or special edition FTR uh, sporty version. Nice, nice, really nice, that FTR. I liked it. The um, the Challenger, they got a Challenger Elite. They're going to make 150 models. Yeah, they you know, drip feeding, but they're coming out with new models. They're, they're keeping the name alive, as it were. But Harley Davidson, it's like tumbleweed right now. You know, everybody else is talking about Harley Davidson in terms of, you know, uh, what they're going to do with their office space at their headquarters. You know, what some workers are going to do in a warehouse somewhere. What, you know, whatever. But nobody's talking about bikes. Nobody's talking about stuff. You know, you're talking about the negative stuff when you really should be talking about exciting stuff from Harley Davidson. They're not there. They're just not there. So you wonder where are they? You wonder, you know, are they going to change this up? Or, you know, we we all have egg on our face when January comes around and Harley Davidson bring out the shock and awe, you know, uh, you know, will they wow us with something else? I mean, if you go on, if you go onto YouTube, as I keep on saying, you go onto YouTube and check out the channels and some of them bless them, <laughs> bless them. I, I, I I, I gotta say, let us know in the comments below. But I say, you, you wonder what the hell they're thinking when they come out. Some of this, you know, it's speculation. It's all speculation. It's all, hey, I've got it on good authority. You know, hey, I, my buddy told me this is going to be, and you're like going, you know, okay, fine, fine. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the opinion because, you know, that's for me. That's what YouTube is all about. It's about opinions. This is not. For me, it's not about um, giving you facts or giving you uh, the the uh, the nuts and bolts of everything. You know, we're we're not official press releases. We're not official spokespeople for the company or for a product, whatever. Although some people try to be, or somebody try to sell you anything at any given opportunity, of course. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of speculation. They're just rumor and speculation, and people, I'm sure, they hear stuff. They're not like journalists. <laughs> I'm not a journalist, but you know what I mean. You know, that who try to fact check or try to get at least, if they hear a story, they'll say, "Okay, this is just a rumor. This is just a story I've heard." Or if it's, or what you will do 
you'll always try and find another story. You'll always try and find another source. It's called corroborating sources. And you'll always try and find multiple sources giving the same information. Because if you don't, you can easily get burnt. And Christ, you know, I've gone out with stories and information before, and I've had to retract them as well. Uh, you know, in the past, or, you know, I've had to say, do you know what? Actually, uh, do you remember that video I made a few weeks ago when I talked about that? Actually, I got that wrong. Um, and it's also always about the language that you use and the words that you use and everything like that. So, you know, I have learned definitely over the last few years to um, be more um, specific about when things are just a rumor, when things are just an opinion, or when something is kind of factual, if you know what I mean. There's story, there's substance to it as well. Um, and, and I've tried to get better at doing that. And you know, and people in the comments will call me out on it. They'll say, this is not that, this is not that. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, fair, fair comment, fair comment. You know, this is, you know, I, I should have shown that, I should have done that. But you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, we're not professionals. <laughs> I know lots of people like to think so sometimes that we're professional, you know, television people, or whatever, or movie people. But we're not, you know, we're just, you know, people who like going on to YouTube and, you know, sharing stories and making our own videos and all that sort of stuff. You know, so it's, you know, it's not always kind of 100% as it were. But, you know, there's people out there and they, they're talking about Harley Davidson and say, oh, the new models and it's going to be like this. And some of it is interesting watches. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not being anti those other other youtubers or whatever or other instagrammers or tiktokers or, or websites especially websites i'm not anti them i'm just saying this without substance without actual evidence there's nothing to say there's nothing to you know feed upon and i always say this when the, the rumors for 2023 bikes started what two months ago i think i made a, a live stream about it uh, I was saying, you won't know, you won't know for sure, for sure, until Harley Davidson come out with a a um, a sneak peek or a sneak view, or or certainly until the day of the launch, and they start talking about their new bikes and their new models that they talk about. And Harley Davidson, just bear this in mind: Harley Davidson, the last two three years have have employed this January launch with not really talking a lot not really saying a lot but then throughout the year or in the, the coming months they start drip feeding more information more motorcycles so the launch is almost like they open the doors it's not like they open the gates they go there we go open the gates and this is a harley davidson world and soon we'll be talking about that they always give you the, the you know the stories and the the history and the heritage and they always kind of come out with you know something or other and it's you know i just find it laughable i gotta say but you know each their own some people love it other people don't love it as much and i'm one of those people who don't love it as much because i think it's just it's it's just been done it's it's an old tactic it's an old marketing tactic i think they just need to be snapping and hopefully i just hope that harley davidson have at least just once watch one of my videos or watch watch one of my live streams and can understand I'm coming from a position of of um of positive encouragement in that I want you to change it up to do it better to make it a show make it a show make it something that we can look up to the gods as I was talking about uh you know a video the other day and just say look oh wow this is amazing you know we want to see a launch whether it's a virtual launch or whatever and say wow this is amazing you know, you know, you know, shock and awe us, wow us with your wares, wow us with your intentions, wow us with, you know, what what you want to do for for the future, in whatever it is, in whatever size motorcycle, in, in whatever size, in whatever you you know branding it is, whatever products, whatever technology. You know, wow us, you know, get us enthused, get us excited, get, you know, draw us in and hold us, you know, and, and hold our attention. And, and that for me is where I think that Harley Davidson failed, in my opinion, you know, for, for, the, for the last few years. I think they failed. They failed in that regard. And, you know, I, I think, you know, they're the, the classic one where they've had a great success with the Pan America 
and how that came out and how it was delivered and how it kind of surprised many people around the world in in the adventure bike world they surprised a lot of people how good the bike is because it is you can't say it isn't but it's it's got frailties there's no doubt in the first couple of years it's had it's had problems in minor as i would say in the grand scheme of things but overall it is a success it's as a success of a model and it's a successful departure from what people know of harley davidson right they it's a success i i think you can agree you know i don't think it's the best looking bike in the world don't get me wrong i, I in fact i don't think it's a, very nice it's grown on me i've gotten to like it more i don't think it's the best looking bike in the world but it is a success it does what it says on the tin it's in a big adventure bike and they're going to bring out a new one right well that's the rumor they're going to bring out a new one a 975 i talked about this a couple of months ago and actually i talked about this a long long time ago as a rumor that i'd heard as well Again, but that was just a rumor, so I couldn't substantiate that. But then you then you think, okay, the, they've had that great success, and then they then they bring out the Nightster. Now, for some people, they absolutely love it. I, mean, I you know, this is like um, horses for courses. You know, what whatever you know, you do you, and I do me. It's it's whatever you find is is great. But I just didn't think the Nightster wasn't a good all round product don't get me wrong if they, they put the nightster with a 1250 engine not detuned it i would have been like aha i like that I, yeah i like that i like that a lot you know that's that's what power that's just all right you know but it wasn't it wasn't it was kind of detuned you kind of short changes to say well if you can do the nightster if you're going to do something like a 975 you need to you need to tune it a lot more bring it down but tune it up as well so, you know, I, I think they got it wrong. I think the styling was a bit all over the place on it as well. I'm not alone in, in that respect. However, it's had a few issues as well, but it hasn't sold in great numbers either. You know, that's the thing. So, you know, everything that you say about Holly Davidson in terms of negative, there's always really good positives. And this is the same for all manufacturers, okay? Wherever there's a negative, there's always a positive. You've got to have a balanced view, or I've got to have a balanced view, not only in terms of what the what the stuff that I talk about or the, the opinions that I have, but it's also good to have a balanced view in just determining what is good and what is bad or what you like and what you don't like, right? But I think when, when you're talking about stories for next year that, or where the company is going to go next year, then for me, they've got to change the way they've done things the last couple of years. It was innovative. It was different in that they wanted to get away from the autumn reveal. They wanted to come from an early New Year reveal. But it kind of it fell flat on its face. It's that you can't have an early re reveal and not really bring out anything, not really talk any about anything so really substantial. You know, it's not as if they started the January reveal a couple of years ago and said, right, here are 10 new motorcycles, brand new. Have a look at that. And you're like, go, wow, 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 it's amazing. And yeah, and there's fireworks going off and explosions and fireballs and, you know, volcanoes erupting and all that sort of stuff, you know, and uh, whatever, sword fighting and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's ridiculous, I know. But what I'm saying is, you know, there, there was nothing. It was just flat. They, they did it the year, second year after this last year. And for me, it was flat. Yes, the STs came out and everything like that. But again, for me, I thought I was just flat. I just thought, well, you know, it's nothing wow, brand new. The biggest wow that they've had is the Revolution Max engine. That's the biggest wow. And the, the Pan America has been the success. The Sports Rest, I don't think, has been a success in, in, in those terms, not that level. The Pan America, definitely. Sports Dress, I'm not so sure. Nightster, whilst it's the, the design has grown on me, and, and definitely when I when I went to see it in person, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get it. I get the lines of it. I get the look of it. The Sports Dress, I, I don't like the lines of it. I don't like the look of it. But the, the Nightster, yeah. Over the two, definitely the Nightster over the Sports Dress. I just wish the Nightster had the sports to rest, uh, the 1250 engine for a start i just wish they designed the left side of the bike a lot better that's all but you know that's just that's a personal thing that's just an opinion that's not factual that's not you know that's not analysis that's just opinion that's first impression we could all have our impressions but for harley davidson next year they've got to do something for me that is 
a cut above the rest because they're out of the loop. I'm asking, where are Harley Davidson? Where are they? Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna play this tactic, if you're gonna be, hey, let's be really cool and arrive late to the party type of deal, then you make sure you better be wearing your best fancy dress costume. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to be coming as a, you know, um, oh, I just came as a school teacher because you didn't have anything, you know, to wear or you couldn't find anything. No, you've got to be coming as Count Dracula. Do you know what I mean? You gotta be coming in as uh uh, I don't know, Thor or something. <laughs> you know what? Whatever. You got to be. You you got to turn up to the party. You got to make a show. That's what Holly Davidson needs to do. Uh, anyway, I've rambled on. I've rambled on. But let's just uh, uh, get into a couple of comments to say I, I haven't really paid much attention to the comments. I do uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, DB, hello. Uh, also, HD don't encourage the new average Joe as a customer. I, I, I always talk about this. Yep, absolutely. Uh, on the big V twin uh, range, just look at the prices: fourteen thousand one hundred pounds gets you their cheapest, yet sold a raw, uh, sold as a raw stripped down bobber style to, uh, tank black canvas. Yeah, exactly. That's a soft tail slim. Um, again, if you if you watch some of these uh, YouTube videos, whether they're right or wrong, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not okay. I've heard things, but I'm not going to add to that rumor. That's you know, I'm not going to do that this year. Um, but the, you know, it's 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 an odd bike to have an entry level because they've got rid of the sportsers now. They don't have an entry level because they got rid of those street bikes a couple of years ago. They don't have entry level. There we go. Uh, gonna have to go. Uh, all very good. Keep up the hard work. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Brian. That's very very kind of you. Listen, uh, all I can say is what well, it's uh, nine o'clock now here in the UK. It's a Saturday night. Look, what am I doing here? <laughs> Enjoying myself in front of you guys. But listen, I, I just wanted to bring you a, a show tonight. Uh, uh, talk about some new bikes. Talk about my uh, my frustration, I suppose. Yeah, it is a frustration with Harley Davidson because I want to be talking about Harley Davidson. You know, people think I'm anti Harley Davidson. I'm not at all. I'm very pro. Because I'm pr I'm pro Harley Davidson just as I am pro every other motorcycle brand or every other motorcycle I should say. Um, I just wish I was could talk about them. I, w I wish I could show you pictures, new designs. I wish I could test ride new Harley Davidsons. You know, I wish I could say, look, there's you know there's a, a a shipload of bikes on its way. You know, they're coming to you soon. You know, type thing. That's what I want. I wanted to say the same about Indian. I want to say the same about BMW, about Fantic, about, uh, you know, Benelli, uh, whatever. It doesn't make any sense. Energica, you know, wh whoever it is, Zero. You know, I, I love talking about bikes. I love riding bikes, whatever it is. That, that doesn't change for me. That doesn't change. It, and it never will change. That is, you know, I, I ride a Harley Davidson. I've got a, I've got a, uh, Riehu Marathon 125, which I read a bit, which I'm, uh, you, uh, well, there's some news coming in on that one. Let's put it that way. Watch the videos uh, this coming week. Uh, and, um, you know, I've got this build here, which I'm not sure if I'm ever going to finish the way things are going. Uh, but, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, but I want to talk about these things. You know, I want to ride it. You know, I'd love to ride it. I want manufacturers to, uh, you know, to, to allow me to ride their bikes, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know, just for fun, not even to review them per se. I don't want to be a motorcycle review channel, uh, per se, you know, I, you know, I, I want to be a motorcycle enthusiastic show and tell type, uh, channel, you know, because I, I always say this and I say this until I blew them in the face. I, I'm either the worst or the best motorcycle reviewer that you've ever had. Okay. Because I, I, all I would do would be getting on a bike and I would say, well, I'll tell you what the bike is. And you, you watch my motorcycle reviews from the past, right? It's similar to what I would do or how I truly feel. But I give you the you know, nuts and bolts of dimensions. So like, oh, it's got that there. But, you know, I'm riding it and I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm, I'm smiling. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm smiling. I'm, and I go, yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I'm like the worst kid in the candy store. You know, the, the uh, sweet shop, as we were over here. I'm mean, the worst kid because I'll say, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, and I want that, and I want that. And I, I want them all. I want them all. If, if I, I made a video about this in the past, you know, if I could have a stable of bikes, I would have every single bike ever made. 
honestly, if I, if I was a multi-billionaire, I would have a warehouse full. I'd be like the Jay Leno of motorcycles, you know, or whatever. I, I'd have a motorcycle everywhere. You know, I, lo I love them. You know, just to ride them, just to turn them around, whatever, whatever. I mean, that's totally ridiculous, I know. Totally impractical, totally whatever. But but I would, you know, it, it, it would, be, you know, you put me on any bike, any two wheels, and three, I suppose, to a certain degree, and even quads to a certain degree, but in you know, two wheels, definitely. Wherever I am in the world, whether it's on a moped, with a scooter, 125, 250, 300, on-road, off-road, scrambler, dirt bike, whatever, commuter bike, sport bike, cruiser bike, tour, whatever. Guaranteed, if let's say there was a group uh, of guys, you know, and we say, hey, let's all go for a ride. And we got a choice of bikes. And, you know, they're all picking up their Harleys and they're all picking up their you know, big Triumphs and big BMWs, and they say, oh, Alf, sorry, you've got the little moped. I'll be like, yeah, great, no problem. Love it. You know, whereas some people would say, I am not riding that, nowhere. But for me, nope. And I will say that, hand on my heart, no word of a lie. That would, you, I would get on a bike, and I, no, I'd probably make fun of myself and say, I look ridiculous on this bike. I look like a, you know, a big orangutan on it or something, because, you know, size and everything, you know, but, but, you know, in terms of actually getting on a bike and enjoying it, yeah. And, I, and I've had some, some of my best days riding on scooters, you know, on, on, you know, 125, 250s, or even 50cc scooters. I've had some of the best fun some of the best fun you know going around greek islands or island of Cyp uh, cyprus uh, cyprus uh you know girlfriend on the back that kind of thing just having fun just you know enjoying it just having fun and for me you know if if motorcycle is anything more than a mode of transport it should be at the very least fun regardless of what you are riding it should be first and foremost fun Mode of transport is to get you to point A to point B, but you should absolutely enjoy the experience. It's just like you buy a Ferrari or, you know, your favorite car. It should be something fun that you really, really enjoy, really connect with. Otherwise, you might as well go and buy yourself a Ford Focus, you know, or, you know, or whatever. You might as well just go and buy some kind of generic thing that is it's just the mode of transport. It just it just fulfills you get from point A to point B. What's the point in getting something that you don't really enjoy getting on there? Yeah. Uh, well, for me, of course. I mean, of course, if you're going to, you know, do the whole mode of transport thing as a commuter, fine, and you want a cheap f f form of transport, yeah. Okay. Look, and as we go on, there's so many more options, you know, electric bikes, hybrid bikes, hydrogen bikes, which I talked about the, the other day. So there's lots of things, you know, to talk about now. And, uh, you know, you would hope that these manufacturers in, in the coming years are going to reflect that. They're going to reflect that uh, there's, there's a need for motor transport. There's a need for a cheap mode of transport. There's a need to, you know, encourage people to get into biking, but also to give them that joy, to give them that fun. You know, to, and this is why I'm I ride a Harley Davidson, right? So many, many people think, oh, God, he rides a Harley Davidson. Oh, boring, boring, boring old man. But as I say, that's why I love the Fantic so much. That Fantic Caballero, when I first saw it a few years ago at a, at a trade show uh, uh, here, in the, uh, yeah, here in the UK, um, I just thought, I, you know, I was walking along and it was that typical, uh, I, hello, 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 stop, have a look, draw me in. Well, you've already made me stop and you've already made me, you know, made me turn around and you've made me start to walk towards you. That's three wins already with a bike, isn't it? If you get uh, somebody to stop, turn around, and you make them walk towards the bike, that's three wins. You're almost there. You're almost there with a sale, aren't you? And that's the thing. You know, when you've got your bike, when you love your bike, when you leave your bike, guess what? We all have a little look. Yeah. Now, even with my Harley, even now, even today, I did that. I do it all the time. I get off my bike. I take a few five ten paces whatever something like that. as i'm walking away i have a little look yeah oh yes she's still good you know it's, it's that you know so you know that kind of connection that kind of attraction w to get you there and to keep you there but it's when you sat on the thing 
you know, and, and, and how you feel and how it makes you feel, you know, and th that's the fun. It's enjoyment, you know, and it's whatever, whatever great happy time you're having on a motorcycle, that's what it's supposed to be. And, you know, when, when all the other nonsense, all the other noise interferes with that and, you know, manufacturers or dealerships or the price or the value or whatever, all that sorts of interfering, you know, because whether you get on a five thousand pound dollar shekel bike, two thousand dollar, five hundred dollar bike, or whether you get on a hundred thousand dollar bike, actually that is kind of irrelevant. The relevancy is okay. Does it? Can you enjoy yourself on any of them? Yes, you can. Great. Well, that's fine. It's then it doesn't matter what you ride. Then does it? Then it's just down to personal taste and preferences and everything, or you know what you feel you should be riding, or what you know what uh, what is what is the uh, what is the cool thing to have? Is it is, is, it, is a um, is it a status symbol or something like that? You know, for some people it is no doubt there is that thing, there is that element where some people use these things. You buy these things just for show. It's just for show. It's to be part of a crowd or it's to be part of something grown ass adults act like this sometimes you think why you know haven't you grown up enough to be your own person anymore <laughs> you know why do you have to do this you know but that's it isn't it but fundamentally you should be able to get on any bike and you should be able to say i'm having fun i'm enjoying this experience you know i you know i love it and this is why I say i would be the worst or the best motorcycle reviewer you know, I could be objective, of course I can. I could be whatever, but I'm still going to say, yeah, I'd like that bike. Yeah, I'd, I'd ride it. Yeah, I just have. I've ridden it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> you know, there we go. Uh, but anyway, listen, I, I've rambled on for too long. It's a Saturday evening. Go and enjoy yourself. So if you're watching this later, uh, uh, you know, leave your comments. Let us know uh, what you think of all those bikes that I've shown. Tell us what you think about your favorite motorcycle brand. Let us know uh, in the comments if you want to ask questions. If you want to send us an email via the website, revelatealf.com, just you know, go over there. You can show your support in with all those super chat things, super uh, thanks, and all that down below. Uh, or go to the website. There's a PayPal link there as well for show your support to keep this big show on the road, as it were, and so I can always have new equipment uh, for you as well uh but anyway listen it, it's been emotional thanks for watching have a great saturday evening or morning or wherever you are in the world but some of you might even be sunday night or sunday morning well sunday morning i would say um but wherever you are have the rest great uh, rest of the weekend there is a video coming out on monday i'm going to try and do a bit of videoing at five o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning would you believe uh we'll see how that pans out i'm not i'm not hopeful i'm not hoping it's going to be a good video but there we go um and try and get a bit more another video for for, uh, for friday as well uh, but also, uh, I'll see if I can come back in the midweek for another live show. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be an evening show or a daytime show. But hey, if you're watching it later, just leave your comments and hopefully you'll you get a kick out of it. And uh, let us know what you think of the live shows anyway. Let us know because that is... Uh, it's always good to have feedback as well. And as I say, you know, it, I want to make it like a magazine style program where I'm sort of giving news, giving you information, and but just talking about other stuff as well. And one week it might be about art. It might be about music. It might be about films. You know, yes, along motorcycle themes, I suppose, but it, it doesn't have to be. We can talk about anything, anything that's going on, whether it's politics, whether it's whatever any anything was going on this is a live show anything goes anything goes from a motorcycle biker's point of view as it were and from your point of view you know it doesn't have to be anything anyway guys listen beautiful you've been a wonderful audience <laughs> you've been amazing guys you've been absolutely amazing uh but i would say you know enjoy your weekend whatever you do and i'll see you again check out the video on monday and all i can say is well it's uh, it's been one of those ta-da